remember where you were at the time of this person who's in front of you, the prospect, the questions you had back then or the concerns you had or something like that. And just write to that person, write to who you were when you were in their, their shoes where they are now. And I thought that's kind of a cool idea. You found your way to the Winning Tactics podcast with host Adam Sinkis. Adam discusses winning tactics with small business owners and entrepreneurs, uncovering processes and introducing the tools and solutions for enhancing the bottom line. Thanks again for finding your way to the Winning Tactics podcast and now your host, Adam Sinkis. Happy Tuesday, everybody. It is my favorite day of the week. It is Winning Tactics Podcast Day, and we got an exciting episode today before we get into all the important stuff that you want to learn about short, helpful books. Um, just want to remind everybody, take a moment, follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, your favorite social platforms. Also jump on over to YouTube and don't forget to subscribe to our channel or on your favorite podcast network. Um, but again, like I said, exciting show today, right? Um, because gosh, my junk drawer is full of all these like pamphlets from the pizza place and the roofer that knocks on my door and the you know, everybody that comes to my house and the realtors, and then I get a whole bunch of them in the mail too. Right. And, and I don't know about you, but like, I literally, I have a, like a drawer that a lot of these things just end up in and I never look at them again. And so today we are going to talk about how you can elevate your brand in your business beyond the junk drawer. Um, so excited for my guest, Mike Capuzzi, Mike, welcome to the show. Uh, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Hey, Adam. Well, first of all, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you for that intro. That's, there's some that's some writer downers there for me. Um, but uh, I've been in business for myself, Adam, since 1998. Uh, before that, I was in corporate America at a software company that was very small and, and got very large while I was there. Um, traveled the world and uh, realized that it, while it was a very cool experience, I always had an entrepreneurial you know, drive. So at the height of the dot-com bubble, when everything was just going great in the software world, I decided to leave a really good job and start my own consulting company for software companies. And did that for a number of years. Uh, the bubble burst. And when things sort of changed, I changed my target market. And since about 2005, Adam, I have been serving local business owners, small, medium size, and also folks like yourself that have more of a national and international audience um, with you know direct response marketing strategies. So have been serving them, literally thousands of them over the years. Uh, part of that has been helping them publish books. Well, I know we're going to talk about that today. And uh, it's been an amazing ride. I can't believe it's been over 20 years. It goes by in a blink, but it's uh, it's been all good. Yeah, no, I, I, I can't believe like I was thinking about that the other day, just how, how quickly time passes. Um, you know, it, it's, it's an interesting, uh, interesting dynamic when you think about all the things that you do in a, in a period of time and you go, it feels like that was just yesterday. <laughs> and I think it's also interesting. And I, I say this to my daughters, I've got two college age daughters, like Life is a bunch, you know, not to use a book metaphor, but it's a bunch of chapters. And what's yeah. really important right now might not be important in a couple. It's just, it really is amazing how it happens, but that's a whole other topic. Yeah. So let's dive into this a little bit, right? Because, you know, when, when we first connected, I was really intrigued by this, this thought of how do I give a book away or why would I give a book away instead of just the, like the pamphlet, the standard pamphlet or, you know, the email marketing or some of the many other things that we're doing in the marketing space. Why books? Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, for most of us, and I'm now towards the latter part of my career. So, you know, I grew up with books. I mean, real books, right? You know, the kind of books behind me type of thing, ones that you could hold. Um, and markup and stuff like that. 
You know, I think for for the most part, Adam, I even, you know, even today with the younger generation, I think books still hold a value in all of us, whether we're business owners, nonfiction books, fiction, you know, fictional books, whatever, it doesn't matter. I think, you know, first of all, we we, we place value on them. So right off the, the start, I mean, one thing, you know, brochures, pamphlets don't have for the most part is that sense of perceived value. So just by their very nature, one of the big differentiation points with a book versus a brochure, for example, is that most people assign and place value. I mean, there's still bookstores. There's still independent bookstores. Obviously, there's still Amazon. Obviously, there's still libraries, right? So books aren't going away. Print books are not going away. Yes, audiobooks, you know, electronic books are, you know, increasing. But, you know, I think it's that inherent value that makes them such a unique business marketing tool for so many t- types of business owners. Yeah, you know, it's interesting like until we talked I'd never thought about it from uh from a small business perspective, mm. from like, you know, the 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 local business model, right? Because you know, I'm so used to, um, you know, you go into a re- retail store and, you know, they got a brochure about the products that they're selling or, you know, a card or, you know, a little rat card, something like that. Right. And and over the years, I've designed, you know, bunches and bunches and bunches of those for people. And they're great tools. But, you know, the fact like when you sent me the book, I'm like, this is like a really like tangible, like cool thing. And and I'm going to see if I can get my camera. Yeah. So, so this is the hundred page book that he sent me, um, you know, and I started like looking at it, I'm like, it's got weight, it's got feeling. And like, for me, like if I were to receive that as a customer or have the opportunity even to buy it for a small, small value, you know, small couple of bucks, whatever, like, there's a lot of value there to me from from that feeling perspective. Yeah, I mean, the other thing, Adam, is most people will not ask you to sign a brochure, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you know, when you have a book, um, whether or not they ask you or not, by default, I always teach my clients, just put a little note in there, right? You know, mm-hmm. you sign it. Um, so, yeah, most people don't do that with business cards or brochures. Um, so, again, it's that it's that inherent nature. And, and listen, f- you know, Another thing, though, is that book books, you know, definitely tend to attract a different type of clientele or prospect. And, and, and again, it depends on your business. But just by the very nature that it's a book uh, and in book format and, you know, you are the author, it's there's a, it's a game changer in a lot of ways. So I'm sure we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, you know, I wanted to ask you, though, like. Why a physical book over an ebook, right? Ebooks are so, you, I mean, you, you literally could write an ebook, a 10 or 15 page or 20 page ebook in like no time and put it out. And I know a lot of people that do that on their websites, like download our free ebook on, right? Why physical book versus ebook? Well, it goes back to what I said a couple of minutes ago. It's kind of hard to autograph an ebook. Um, <laughs> And listen, we, we chuckle, but it's real, okay? Mm-hmm. It's real. And whether or not you're some well-known expert or a local dentist, there's something special when you personalize a book to somebody. But, I mean, listen, there are very good reasons to have an ebook, an audiobook, uh, PDF, digital, Kindle, whatever it might be. I always think that, you know, people, different people to choose different ways to consume content. So the very first thing is put it in book format, whether it's a short book, a longer book. But by all means, I mean, my book, you mentioned the 100-page book, so thank you, um, which ironically is 100 pages. Um, Kindle book, um, print book, obviously, right? Uh, Audio book on Audible. And it's also, we have it as a digital book that can be read on websites and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's the beauty of this is you create it once and then you leverage it many different ways. So it's not either or Adam, I think it's, it's all the above. And again, for the most part, I would say, you know, I deal with a lot of local main street uh, business owners, dentists, lawyers, doctors, insurance agents, those kind of folks. They all tend to have places of business and to be able to have your books on a rack, like I have behind me, when you walk into their office, take a copy, take a copy for a friend, that's very difficult with a PDF or a digital book. Um, so there's, you know, reasons to have all of them. Yeah. 
No, it makes it makes a lot of sense, you know. And I am I love the the idea of repurposing content. Um, you know, it's one of the things that uh, you know I love about like my podcast, for example. And just there's so much content that gets repurposed um, in, in this space, you know. Um, but you know, you have to be smart about it too, right? And, and I think one of the roadblocks that I had for a long time was this, this time commitment, uh, this thought of a time commitment of writing a book. Like it's this huge, huge, huge process. And you mentioned in your book, like the typical time frame is like six to eight weeks, which like I start to look at that and go, well, maybe it isn't that bad. So let's talk about uh, kind of the process. So, you know, how, how do I go from, well, I think I'm going to commit to this to actually getting it done. Yeah. Well, if I could take one step back, sure. and just so we're on the same page with everybody watching and listening, the kind of books that I'm a fan of that I suggest to my clients, first of all, they're nonfiction business oriented books. Okay. So they're not, you know, fictional stories, they're not uh, textbooks. They are books that are designed to be essentially a sales tool to promote you and your business to differentiate you. So first of all, that's one you know fundamental characteristic. The other thing, Adam, is they're designed to be read in about an hour. These are not the, your typical 300, 400 page nonfiction business book. Again, they have their place, but I don't know about you, Adam. I, I have tons of books here in my office <laughs> and I start most of them with great intentions. And then like 200 pages in, I just lose steam. I lose interest, life gets in the way. And I wanted to figure out, you know, a better way to give someone a concise, focused bit of information in bite-sized chunks that they can be consumed in about an hour um, so that they feel the accomplishment of reading the book, but then more importantly, want to take the next step with the author. So just so everyone understands, these are books that are, you know, again, real books. And I've got a couple of them here. Uh, they look great and all that. So they're real books. But they're designed to be very intentional with their length, how long it takes to read. And then for the author, like you said, our World Record Act, Adam, is from idea to printed book, 23 days. So That's it, crazy. It can be really quick. But typically it takes the average business owner, because they're doing a lot of other stuff, about you know, 6, 8, 12 weeks. Um, and it's also because it's very focused and we have a very specific formula. I grew up in an Italian family. I believe in recipes. And we have a very unique recipe for our shooks, our short, helpful books, um, that they follow a you know a step-by-step -step approach. And they have certain things that are designed to help the reader, but then also to take you know get the reader to take action. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fantastic. You know, um, I love that it's this really like focused, focused piece, mm -hmm. right? Because um, you're right, some business books are super bloated and long-winded and repetitive and. Yep. You know, I, I now pretty much only search out business books that I can go read a chapter here or a chapter there on a specific topic that I'm looking to get information on um, so I can slice them up in, in ways that is useful to me uh, from a time perspective as well. So um, so I, I appreciate the, the thought process behind how do we make this consumable yep. for whoever's going to read it, you know. Um, let's talk a little bit about ideation because, you know, I think I think, you know, we're all experts in, in our own individual spaces. Um, but how do you come up with an idea that is something that's marketable, right? Because you, you still have to, you know, either you still have to make something that's interesting for people to read. Yeah. And I should also caveat, there's one other probably unique aspect to our short, helpful books, which I call a shook. Um, is that they're really, you're not there. You don't create these to make money by selling them. Yeah. Right, you might make a dollar or two on Amazon if it's up on Amazon, but that's not the intention. I'd much rather see you give away a bunch of copies to ideal readers. So, you know, it's it's not about creating a book that someone's going to necessarily buy per se. Having said that, to your point, it does have to be a based on a topic that you know you're an expert on. That this is the reason why you are you, the business owner, are in business, and it really should be focused, Adam, on either you know, the problems people have with the products or services that you offer um, or a goal they want to achieve, you know, lose 10 pounds, whatever it might be. Um, so it's either, you know, they're, they're, 
the, these books are either, like I said, focused on a problem or a, a wish that the, the reader wants to have. Um, or another reason some of our authors create their shooks is because they're saying the same thing over and over to prospects. Um, for example, just as an example, uh, kitchen remodeler. You know, there's certain criteria, certain steps for every kitchen remodeling uh, client. Why not put that into a short, helpful book that you can give to a prospect so that A, they see you as an author, and B, all that information's right there for mm -hmm. them. Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking too. You know, we service a lot of the home services industry, right? And I'm thinking like, you know, doing major like home renovations or like a new roof or some, you know, something like that. Like, you know, how awesome would it be if the contractor showed up and said, here's a book that's going to explain everything that you should expect over the next whatever. Yep. You know, like I, it just becomes very, very, very powerful because now they've empowered me with a whole bunch of information as well as, you know, being the one that's going to do the project. And, and there's another little thing that happens in that situation. I mean, first of all, we as consumers, whether it's you or me, we, you know, especially like a project like that, they're, they're complicated projects, they're expensive projects. It's not something we do every day. So the very fact of, I, I call it helping before selling, the very fact of that person, that author, that business owner was trying to help us before quote selling us, I think differentiates him or her. But again, Adam, and this is so, it's so powerful and it's so real. You know, let's say two different, you know, uh, roofing contractors come out to my house. We just had our roof done a couple of years ago. One did the typical, hey, here's your, uh, here's your estimate, you know, the, 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 the carbonless form. And the other said, listen, I wrote this book for you. I want you to read it. Um, you know, and, and it's going to explain everything we do, et cetera, et cetera. It gives the estimate also. There's something that happens subtly with me, the prospect, like, whoa, vendor A gave me an estimate, vendor B gave me his book, you know, and all the rest of the stuff. That's a really subtle but powerful differentiator. Yeah. Yeah. So we go from this, this, thought of ideation, right? And we talked about, you know, how you might use it, solving a problem or speaking to a problem that you consistently have. How do we start to put that on paper? What's what's that look like? Because I, it's not easy. <laughs> no, it's not, which is why we're in, you know, I'm in business doing this. I coach my clients. We flesh this out over a number of phone calls, stuff like that. Because again, there's a formula we use and I believe in. So we're guiding our clients to that, you know, that formula, if you will. But I think at a high level, Adam, it, it comes down to, I have my own podcast and I was interviewing someone and they, 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 they offered this suggestion, which I thought was really a cool idea. They said, listen, remember where you were at the time of this person who's in front of you, the prospect the questions you had back then or the concerns you had or something like that. And just write to that person, write to who you were when you were in their, their shoes where they are now. And I thought that's kind of a cool idea. You know, my first book I did in 2007, I had a ton of questions. Um, I wrote a typical, well, I published a typical long, big, thick book. Um, but I would say put your, you've got to, you know, one of the things we do is really help our clients identify their targeted readers and what their target reader's goals are relative to what it is you, you, know, you sell, products or services. And, and really just try to help that person. What are the most common issues? What are the most common problems, pitfalls? What are the things they should be doing, et cetera, et cetera. And if you just take it down to that basic level, Adam, these books are not meant to be the A to Z on everything. You know, using your roofing contractor, this is not about every you know every step and every nuance of a roof it's meant to provide a general overview answer the general questions but then once you become a client or a customer you now have the opportunity to get that more detailed information yeah no that makes a lot of sense you know um i i always look at look at books regardless of the topic fiction nonfiction. right it's it's always got to tell a story and i think you know, as a market, the marketer inside me says the story it's got to tell is my customer's story mm -hmm. always, you know. And so, you know, I, I love where you go with that and keeping it short and sweet and simple as an overview, as a guide, not as the this right. definitive, you know, really deep, 
deep like understanding of how to become a roofer <laughs> right because most people don't care about that that's why they hired somebody to do it <laughs> yeah but you know it's real funny adam i'm reading a book now i just bought it a week ago on amazon it's an entire book written by a medical doctor on water water drinking water um so for the last week and a half i've been drinking about 96 ounces of water and you know i really wanted i was i knew i was dehydrated and i just really wanted to step that up so I'm a, I'm a researcher. I'm a, you know, a book hound. I buy a book on water. And um, it's interesting because it's a pretty thick book. I'm just like flipping through the pages because it's all this, you know, you know how much can you write about a, a water? But I just wanted to get to the nuts and bolts. How much should I drink? What are some tips? Is there any way to make it go down easier, et cetera, et cetera? Um, and I just essentially went to the last chapter, <laughs> even though some of this stuff in the beginning was interesting. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's great. But I think this doctor could have been so, so much better served, you know, probably having a shorter book, maybe on a couple of the topics rather than this almost textbook like book. Um, so anyway. Yeah. Well, you know, that's always the challenge, right? We want to we want to give give the uh, you know, give this really big thing. But, you know, sometimes we have to step back and go, do do my readers really care about? Exactly. All of that? Yeah. And, 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 you know, that that fire hose of information. There is a time and place for that. Oh, yes. But as maybe an introductory book, it's probably too much. So we are going to pause for just a minute. We've been talking about the why it's important and a little bit about the strategy on how you should approach it. Um, but I want to thank my partner and sponsor over at Ventive uh, because they they really help these small business owners out. You know, they you know that you can't afford to have gaps between marketing, sales, service, and operations. And Ventive has reimagined the CRM so you can have a seamless customer lifecycle and transform how you work. You know, they've really figured out the formula so that your teams can all work together efficiently and effectively. Simplify your customer lifecycle and integrate Ventive into your business systems today. Check out the link in the show notes uh, and you can sign up for a free 14-day trial. So really, really cool software, um, really, really innovative stuff that they're doing. It's it's kind of a very unique take on how the CRM really should operate in a business. So Salesforce without the price tag, but definitely with a few extra bells and whistles that are approached a little bit differently. So um, but yeah, we've been we've been jamming along on on why it's important and getting away from the brochure and putting that physical information into their hands. And we talk a little bit about how to write the book. Um, I want to I want to discuss storytelling with you a little bit because we alluded to that. And I think it's important when you're writing a book, you know, when you're writing any kind of content, you got to have a story, something that people can latch on to and follow along with. So how do you approach storytelling with the short, helpful books? Probably in, at, at high level, probably two ways. So I like to start all of my shooks. I suggest to my clients the same thing. Um, to s one of the introductory chapters is why you've created this book. So you, you typically tell a story in that chapter. Um, and, and so that's sort of a story from my point of view um, and, and to why this book was important for me to create for you. The other way we use storytelling and, and stories, Adam, is obviously through like case studies. And again, I always try to instruct my clients to have that social proof of you do what you do. Um, and the best way to do that is through telling a story of how you help someone go from here to here uh, or gain this for that or whatever it might be. So, um, you know, those are the, the typical ways we use stories in our short, helpful books. Yeah, no, I love it. I, you know, and it's very, very similar to what we do from a marketing perspective when we write content, when we write marketing strategies, you know, it's, it's a very similar tactic. So um, definitely like that. One of the other things I like to do, and I think makes really fun and interesting books um, is, uh, you know, or blogs is literally to tell a story that just spells out all the points, right? So, you know, so yeah, in the case of we've been talking about, you know, a roofer, right? You know, Joe, you know, Joe, the homeowner's journey to getting their roof redone, right? You know, and you, you kind of tell it in a fun, lighthearted story type 
um, you know, story type mm -hmm. uh, perspective is as opposed to a more structured, traditional nonfiction perspective. So yep. um, if you've never read it, the energy bus is a fantastic example of, of this being done. So very good. So let's jump into uh, let's jump into this because you know the last piece really comes down to well what is I've I've got the book mm -hmm. figured out how to write it I got it published right you know because that's that's really you know really the next steps and there's there's numbers of ways to get books mm -hmm. published these days mm -hmm. um, we could do an entire show on probably just that mm -hmm. um, but you know now. I need to use it as a marketing tool for my business. So how do you recommend business owners approach using their Shook as a marketing tool in their business? Well, I always like to say, Adam, and anyone who's followed me probably gets sick of me saying this, um, you know, honestly, writing and publishing the book is the easy part. Um, may not feel that way, but it really is because the harder part is the consistent and persistent use because history has, you know, probably millions of examples where authors have gotten their book published and they've gotten boxes of them and they sit in the boxes because they don't know how to use it, market with it and promote it. So it really is the, the challenging part of the entire exercise. And, and, and think about it this way. If you don't market your book effectively and do it day in and day out, the world and your ideal reader will never know about it. So you're doing that person, that ideal reader, you know, an injustice. They they want your book. They want the information in your book. And if they don't know about it, um, so shame on you. So it is the critical part of the overall equation. Um, so I actually wrote a shook on it. And again, we're not looking, I don't instruct our clients to sell their books. Again, they may be for sale on Amazon. That's just because they have to be. Um, but it's about getting it out there in all the right places and wherever their ideal readers might be hanging out. So for our, our, our local business owners, our physicians, dentists, those kind of folks, one of the smartest ways, Adam, which is really kind of unique and really is a, a testimony to the power of a physical book is being able to give out copies to what I call strategic partners. So for example, I was just in Las Vegas last week speaking at a, a convention of child care center owners. So it was my first event in almost two years. Uh, the good news is my client, who's the hostess of the event, had 1,100 people in the room, huge event, um, complete success for her. And we have clients, we're still we're serving these child care center owners. Um, they all have their little short, helpful books. I don't, I don't have any right near me, but, um, and one of our existing clients came up to me and said, oh, Mike, she was telling me all these different stories. And she said, like, next week, which I guess would be this week, she said, I'm going to a, a local hospital. And I forget the, the, the gist of it, but essentially she was doing a presentation and they were going to allow her to put her book, I guess, in the waiting rooms and stuff like that, because it's childcare, you know, it's childcare mm -hmm. for people. Um, so that idea of using a book and giving it out to strategic partners, another client of ours who was a, 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 a biological dentist, meaning he doesn't use mercury, doesn't use fluoride, that kind of thing, very holistic. He knew that his ideal patient were folks that went to yoga studios, health food stores, you know, those kind of businesses. And he worked with a number of those types of businesses in his community and just placed copies, just like, you know, behind me, little copies, take a copy, take a free book. And within the first month, Adam, of doing that, he got two new patients up from that who he would have never gotten had his book not been in the health food store or yoga studio. So that's one of the neat ways. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, of course. I, I, I think that that's absolutely fantastic, I, you know more and more businesses need to partner with each other. Absolutely. Um, you know, there, there's enough business for, for just about everybody in a market it, as long as everybody's, you know, everybody's doing holistic ethical business. So, yeah. yeah. So I love that. Yeah. And that's just one. I mean, listen, there's online examples, you know, web pages, blog posts, podcast guesting is a very, you know, smart way. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to, to do it, again, digitally, in person. But, uh, you know, again, the key thing here is 
regardless of the specific tactic, it's just the consistency of implementing those various tactics that's so powerful. Yeah, you know, one thing came came to mind, and it, and it's only because I just recently worked on a, a rack card for a client. Um, you know about this. You know, is that you know, like I can put together you know a rack card, a thousand thousand copies, including design, for less than five hundred bucks. You know, and that that gets me a thousand of these that I can put everywhere and anywhere. Right? What you know, what does it cost to to be able to give out a book? You know, on average. You mean just the book itself? Yeah. Like, so if I were just to give it away, right. Yeah. You know, if I was using it as like a promotional tool, just to give away to, mm -hmm. you know, ideal clients, mm -hmm. target partners, things like that. What, you know, what is, what does my cost look like on that? You're probably somewhere between three and $5 a copy again for a short book. Like we yeah. do. Uh, and that's in small quantity. It's Adam. I mentioned my first book in 2007. I had to buy, what was it? I bought 3000 copies of that book. It was a paperback. Because back in 2007, you had to buy a lot of quantity to get a price to where it was sort of, you know, you know, a decent price. Well, print on demand nowadays has kind of blown that model up. So, you know, you don't need to order thousands of books. We typically deliver books in quantities of 100. Um, that allows people to make changes if they need to. But, yeah, you're in the 3 to $5 range. And, um, you know, and that's for a high quality paperback book. Now, I think, that, that, you know, the key there, Adam, is while I've, I've, I've used it as an example, we haven't done one yet for, for like, I think you mentioned in the beginning, like a pizza shop owner. So we haven't done a pizza shop shook. I'd like to, because I think there's a good reason why we could do it. But the, the transaction value for a pizza shop owner is what, 20, 30 bucks? Yeah. Whereas a dentist, uh, a podiatrist, whatever, their transaction value warrants the, the you know, the, the higher price of a, a, a book and, and not everything around that. So, I mean, there's more than just the book itself, right? Of but, course. you know, it really comes down to your business, transaction value, lifetime value of a client, what it's worth to you. And that's how you make that cost sort of go away, if you will. Yeah, no, and that that's kind of what I was getting at there, right? You know, for some businesses that, that rack card at 30, 30 cents a copy, once it's designed at, at most is, uh, is pretty okay, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, but you know, if I, if I'm selling five dollar widgets and giving a five dollar book away to give to sell my five dollar widgets, probably not as good of a business <laughs> decision. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, you know, we are getting towards the end of time, so I always like to leave my listeners uh, with a final thought, something that they can take away from our conversation today and apply to their business tomorrow. So, I leave the floor to you for your final thought. Well, I would say it goes back to kind of what you said earlier, Adam, which is maybe the misconception that this, that writing a book is either too hard, it takes too much time, I'm not qualified, I'm not good enough of a writer, and all, you know, all this head trash that so many people have when it comes to, can I write a book? I would love to squash that for each and every one of you uh, who's listening and watching because, yes, if you are serving clients, if you're serving customers, students, whatever it is in your business, and you're serving them, like you, Adam said, ethically and, and doing the right thing, then by all means, you are able and you probably ought to have a book that is helping your prospects. So I would say just try to squash that. You can do it. You probably should do it. Um, there's so many powerful books on Amazon. There's folks like myself that can guide you. And it's it's not this big mountain that many people make it out to be. Absolutely love that. You know, you, you're right. You know, most of the things that we do in our business and our life are, are not the mountain we make them mm -hmm. out to be. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> so I truly appreciate that, uh, that it's a reminder I give myself constantly. Yeah. So so where can people find you? Well, um, two sites. Uh, my main site is MikeCapuzzi.com, uh, M-I-K-E-C-A-P-U-Z-Z-I.com. My publishing company is Bitesized, D, BitesizedBooks.com. Uh, and Adam, with your permission, I'd love to give your followers and listeners and viewers a, a free gift, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Yeah, for so sure. If they go to mikeapuzzi.com forward slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, gifts, uh, I have two gifts for you. 
I have the digital version of the 100 page book, which is the one you mentioned. This is a, a year later out, Adam, it's still a number one bestseller on Amazon. Um, now it's kind of going in and out, but it's still, as of today, it was the number one bestseller in, in a couple Kindle categories. Uh, you can read it online for free. Uh, and I also have a little shook that I put together called the Quick Start Guide. It literally gives you that recipe I talked about earlier. You could take what I'm giving you here and write your own short, helpful book. So there's two gifts, mikecapuzzi.com forward slash gifts. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate that. Um, it's definitely, uh, definitely a good read. It's an easy read. So, um, I, it took me, uh, I think about 45, 50 minutes to get through it. So, um, but lots of great information in there and definitely is going to be setting me on my own path to putting out a short, helpful book for a few things, a few of the services we offer. So, um, really appreciate your time today. Really appreciate everything, uh, that you brought to, uh, to the show and to our audience. Um, and we are looking forward to getting this published out on all the podcast networks. It'll be there, uh, like always every Thursday. Um, and you can also find us on YouTube, Apple podcasts, and at our website, the winning tactics, Dot com. We appreciate everybody who jumped on the live stream and joined us today. And uh, again, Mike, I really appreciate your time as well. Have a wonderful rest Thanks. of your week. Well, that wraps up yet another episode of the Winning Tactics podcast. You can find Adam on both the LinkedIn and Facebook platforms. And to support the show and ensure the success of the podcast, would you kindly consider visiting Patreon forward slash Adam Sinkus? We greatly appreciate it. And until next time, from the Winning Tactics podcast, remember, culture is how your team behaves when no one is looking. Take good care and thanks for listening.